Hello everyone, my name is Mrs. West and I'm an art teacher from Virginia. Um, and just recently, um, our schools have shut down as many schools across the country. And so I've decided to make some art lessons for my students. And one of the projects that I was gonna start with my eighth graders soon um, was a watercolor project on aerial perspective. Now I'm gonna tell you um, right off the bat, watercolor is not one of my best mediums, um, but I've been having a lot of fun working with it at home and uh, practicing up on it. And um, we're going to do a painting on aerial perspective, which is mountains and showing how they get lighter and lighter in the distance. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of the paintings that I have worked on in my own time this past week to kind of brush up on my skills um, to give you kind of a, an idea of where we're going to go. So I've done this painting. Um, and before we get started, I know some of you don't have a lot of art materials or supplies at home, but a lot of people do have watercolor. And I'm going to talk to you about a few of the different types of watercolors that you guys might have available at your house. One of the most standard ones that a lot of people have are these. They're like the washable kind of Crayola Rose Art type watercolor sets. And if you don't have anything else, then you don't have anything else, but these are... Um, these colors tend to be not as rich as some of the other brands. Um, so when you try it, if it's not coming out really dark, that's why. Um, one of the other brands, Prang, you know, a lot of you might have some of these. They come out a little bit darker and richer than, say, the washable watercolors. Um, the ones that I am going to be working with are the Koi watercolors. And you can see bought this and you can see the price it's a little more expensive than the praying and the colors come out a little bit more richer a little brighter than um say the praying or um the crayola but this is what my paint set looks like when you open the box it's got a lot more color choices in there and then the other type of watercolors that some people have um i've got this is an example of a uh, reeves watercolor set and they come in tubes and you have to squeeze them out in a paint tray. Um, and the most famous set of watercolor sets that professional artists use are Windsor and Newton. Um, but one thing you have to keep in mind if you use the tubes is they work just like the cakes. Um, and you have to um, not use them like acrylic or, or um, temper paint. Um, and then when they dry out, you can use them just like you do the cake pans. Um, so no matter what you have, you just got to go with what you have. We're just going to play around with some things. Um, let me show you some other materials you might need. Well, some of the art supplies that you're going to need, of course, are paint brushes. Most of the watercolor sets that you buy in the store come with the brushes that look like this. Um, these are not the best, but if that's all you have, we're going to work with it. I like to find paint brushes that have um, a little more softer tip that come with them. And I have some different sizes. This one gives me more of a fine point that I like working with. And then um, I have some thicker brushes for the larger areas. And also I like to have one of these paint brushes. These are the kind that um, you paint your house with. They're really good at wetting down the paper, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Um, so if you have one of these, these are gonna be handy. And then of course you're gonna need some paper. Watercolor paper, is going to be best for this project. The thicker, the better. I'm going to be using um, Arches watercolor paper. I'm going to hold this up to the screen see if you can see it. This is Arches watercolor paper. It's really thick and it's what um, professional watercolor artists will tend to use. Um, if you don't have watercolor paper, a thick piece of construction paper would work best. And if you don't have um, that, then I guess just go with whatever um, white paper you have available at your house. So let's get started. So I've switched angles a little bit because I'm going to um, try to get you so that you can see um, my table and my work area as I work. Um, but what I've got is my watercolor paper I've placed down onto a sheet of uh, paper towels. And I've got a water cup ready to go. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water and I'm just going to 
paint some water right on the top of the paper. I'm just going to get the paper really wet with that thick brush, that um, house paint brush if you have one. So I'm just going to paint water. I didn't put anything else on there. I just want to get it really wet. What I'm going to do is create a wash, which is going to be um, a really light color that we're going to put in the background. We're going to start with the sky first. So you want to wet your paper first, no color. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a wash in my paint tray lid. Um, and a wash is just a really um, wet, light color. So I'm going to take some water, just putting some water in the tray. Um, and then I'm going to pick a color. Um, I like to work a lot with um, some yellow. So I'm going to mix some yellow into my tray. I'm just going to make a really, really, really light color. And I like mixing a couple of different colors together. I don't like to use just the one color that comes right from the pan. I like to mix colors a lot. So I've made myself a wash. So hopefully your paper's still wet from the water that you applied. And I'm going to take my big paintbrush again, and I'm going to take that color I just made from my wash, and I'm going to just paint that right across my paper. It's going to make a really light yellow. That's what I like. Um, one of the things you're going to notice uh, when you're done is that the paint is actually going to dry lighter um, than you see it right now. So I just went right over that with the yellow. The next thing I'm going to do is I might take some more color and I just want to get some different tones in there. So I might take some more yellow and um, make it a little bit brighter there in some areas. If you want to make um, a sunset for your sky, you might want to try mixing a couple other colors. Maybe I want to put some, I don't know, some pinks or reds in there too. I want to make it look like a sunset. And you don't have to just go straight across if you just want to put some in some areas. You don't even need to use the thick brush, but that's what I like to do just to get some initial tone into my sky. Um, I'm going to take maybe a different size paintbrush and add maybe a little bit of some other colors in there too. So I want to have mine kind of look like a sunset. And one of the things you're going to notice as you're adding some of these colors is that it bleeds. And that means the colors kind of just spread out a little bit. Put maybe some orange in there. And you've got to get the paint wet with water, of course, before you use it. And if you want to, you can always go over that um, and blend it some more with some water on a, a paintbrush. I think I'm going to put a little bit more color in here. So I'm kind of working backwards. So this is kind of upside down. I'll turn my paper so that you can see. But I've started making um, my sky. And I'll flip the paper around so you can see. Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper towel. And if you take the paper towel right on the color you just made when it's still wet, if you want to blot out some clouds or make it look like the sun is coming from a certain area, whenever you want to make, lighten up a color, you're just going to dab it with that um, paper towel. And if you took too much out or you don't like it, you can just go back over some of those areas again. This is what I'm going to do for my sky. I kind of like want the sun coming in this kind of area here. I might just take the wet brush and smooth some of that out. And then next, I kind of like it when I have some clouds in the sky. I wanted to show you, this is my sky that I did. If you can kind of tell. Sky that I did in one of my other paintings. I put some purple 
some darker tones in there because I like to have some of that contrast with my painting. So I think I'm going to take um, my paintbrush and I'm going to get maybe some purples or some blues on there and I'm going to make um, some clouds in here. You can just put them wherever you want. Uh, like I said, I don't like using just one solid color, so I like to mix some different colors. You're just going to play around with this. You know, your first one doesn't have to be perfect. The more you do it, you can figure out where you want to put clouds and what colors you like. So these are my clouds that I make in here. And like I said, they're going to dry a little bit lighter for you. So it's not going to be the exact same color. So if you can get in there and make it a little bit darker in some areas before you decide you're um, done, we're going to let this dry a little bit. I'm going to use a hair dryer before I move on to the next step. But if you don't have a hair dryer, you can just take a break and maybe start another one and move on to something else. Um, but you have to let it dry when you're going to put your mountains on there. Otherwise it will bleed and we don't want it to bleed when we put our mountains on. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with what I have there. It's my sky. And I think I'll come back in here and maybe lighten it up a little bit more where I wanted the sun to kind of appear to be here. So once you've finished your sky, your background, you can take a hair dryer um, and go over it till it feels dry, or you can just leave it and once it's dry, you're ready to put your mountains in. I suggest that you find some pictures of mountains that show aerial perspective. You can find them online or you can just go outside your house if you live in the mountains like we do. I went hiking with my family a couple weeks ago and I took this picture. I don't know if you could tell, but in the background, the mountains look lighter and the mountains that are closer to us look more green and darker. Those mountains in the background, they kind of look bluish. That bluish tint is called aerial perspective. So we're going to put a couple layers into our painting. So we're going to start out with the back layer and we're going to make it a little bit lighter. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do now to make my mountains is to come up with that um, color that I want for the farthest mountains. Um, and they, mountains can be really any a color. We just want to have the main objective be that the ones farther away look a little bit lighter. I like the fact that the mountains that I'm seeing in the background in my picture um, kind of have a bluish tint to it. So I'm going to mix a color on my paint tray with some blue and probably some gray and maybe some brown. And the more water that you put with this will make the color a little bit lighter when you start painting and you can always go back and make it a little bit darker. I suggest starting out a little bit lighter at first, but decide where that back layer is. And I'm starting with one of my thinner paint brushes. I'm just going to go right over top the sky where I want to have that first kind of ridge go. If you're uncomfortable just painting with your paintbrush, you can put a pencil line in there. My suggestion is if you use a pencil though, make it really light because you don't want to see your pencil line when you're all done. So I'm going to take that color that I made. I'm probably going to need to make a lot more. And it's okay if it doesn't stay the exact same shade the whole time. Sometimes that can give it an effect of having some ridges in there, some shadowing. But it's really just important that you make sure your paper is wet before you start your painting. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to paint the back ridge. Okay. 
I'm using a smaller paintbrush. And these are for the mountains farthest away. I might actually get a bigger paintbrush. Looks like I got a large area to cover over here. Trying to speed up the process. And so if you want to go over a little bit darker, make sure you get that sky color covered up, which is why we started out really light in the background in the first place. So that when we cover it up with our um, mountains, it'll go over it pretty well. And I'm going to go even lower than I think with this layer. Because sometimes when you put the second layer on, the ridge doesn't cover up all the parts that you think it will. And one thing that I've noticed when I look at mountains, they tend to look a little bit darker towards the top and fade a little bit as they go down anyways. This kind of creates that naturally. So I did that with my thicker brush and I'm going to go back in maybe outline the top just a little bit more just to give it more of a edge towards the sky so I'm just a little bit of a darker color i'm just going to fade that in with the color that i've made You can go back over that as you need to. And here's where I'm at now. Um, and what I'm going to do next, I'm going to get my hair dryer out again and I'm going to dry that because before I put on another layer, I want to make sure that it's all dry. Otherwise, those layers are going to bleed together. So I've dried my first layer of mountains and I'm going to start my second layer now. I'm going to make a darker color. Um, this time I think I'm going to use some brown and some black. And I'll probably mix it in with the color I've already made. But I'm going to make it a lot darker. So I'm going to actually go for the black in with this color. And I don't want just pure black. So I'll probably put some brown in there as well. And just like I did with the other mountain ridge, I'm going to kind of outline where I want that to be. I think I'm going to have it kind of come up and then um, swoop down. Kind of go something like that. And if you don't like using the paintbrush to put your mountain line in there, you can do it with a pencil. Like I said, just make sure um, you make it light enough that it will get covered up. And in the picture I was looking at, I also noticed like another small mountain ridge coming kind of back behind there. So I think I'm going to just add that. Put like a little ridge here. I'll put that in here with the smaller brush. And then once I've got my outline, I can take my medium sized brush um, to get it done because it's a larger area. I just want to make sure it looks darker than that one blue color that I put on earlier. So again, I'm using black and brown. And one thing you'll notice is that the paper will dry um, a little bit lighter than the color you mix. So if it looks a little too dark, it's okay. It will fade a little bit. I'm 
And I'm actually going to take this color and I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom of the paper. And I'm using, and you hear me talking about the colors I'm using. In your painting, it does not have to be the same color. There are mountains that come in all kinds of colors. If you have like a fall picture, they could be like a reddish or an orange color if you're going out west. Um, the mountains can look blue or purple. And these are just the colors that I've chosen. It's the same with your sky. So your sky does not have to be a sunset. You could have made like a blue or a purple or a pink sky. Just kind of go with whatever you want to try. So once I've got that basic tone in there, I'd like to go back and maybe put a little more color in there and make it a little bit darker. And when you're done with this layer, you can decide if you want to add more. I like to add a lot of detail, so I'm probably going to add more. I'm also going to go back with my finer pointed paintbrush and put a little more detail in some of those ridges that I just put in there. I like to make the top of the mountain line a little bit darker than the rest of the mountain and then I kind of take some water or a little bit lighter bit of the color and blend it down. And sometimes the bigger paintbrush can help you blend it. And the smaller brush helps you fine tune things. You can put some shadows in there if you want. Sometimes you'll see some little ridges and you want to kind of put those in Make them look like little ridges. And swoop down with your paintbrush in a different direction to kind of give it that kind of effect. So if you paint in the direction you want your shadow, I'll give it a different look instead of just going straight across. I'm going to add like a little more detail here at the bottom, so I'm not going to make it too dark on the bottom. It's going to be a little bit lighter than the rest. But this is where I'm at right now. Um, and again, I'm going to go over there with the hair dryer and dry it so I can add a little bit more detail. So I want to show you a couple of the finished ones I did before I move on to this next step. This is optional, but one thing that I like to do is add some fine details down at the bottom. You see I put some rocks um, and some kind of like shrubs coming up in the background of this one that I finished. Um, and then this is another one that I finished. I put some trees coming up um, on top of that darker layer that I just did. So if you want to give your painting just a little bit more detail, um, here's one more thing that you can try. Here's the one that I've been working on with you guys. And I've got that layer dry. If you want to add some layers like rocks or trees, what you're going to want to do is have that fine paintbrush. Um, and details that are closer to you will look the color, more the color that they are in real life. So if you wanted to put in some trees, 
um, or some leaves or some kind of weeds hanging up there at the bottom or, or a rock, you would actually use um, the colors that you would think they are in real life. So if I wanted to put maybe some weeds kind of growing here at the bottom, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. The web camera doesn't really show as much as I would like, but you just kind of take your paintbrush and start putting some of those in. My suggestion is if you're going to put in some kind of trees or leaves, you use more than one shade. So I'm going to put some in here, some green in here with one particular shade, but then I'm going to go back through and I'm going to add some different varieties of green. Um, it's going to make it look more realistic, a little more detail and give it a little more depth. And I know looking back at the videos that I've already recorded, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing because my hand keeps coming in front of the screen. I'm getting used to this whole teaching online thing, so bear with me. Um, so I added some dark green. I think I'm going to go and add some lighter green in there now. Kind of mix that in. And you can get as detailed as you want up front. You can mix some, um, maybe some grass, or maybe you want to put some trees going in the background too. Those can be fun. If you want to try like the rocks that I did in the other painting. Whatever you want. You guys kind of see no, the lighting's kind of hard. I'll try to take a screenshot of this when I'm done um, so that you guys can see it in a little more detail. I'm just going over now. I'm going over with some brown. I like those camouflage colors I'm using my fine paintbrush and I'm putting them kind of every which way. I'm going to put some grass there and maybe I want to give the hint of some trees in the background behind that. I'm going to put some, some tree lines coming back over there. Actually, you might want to do that step first and then go over the top of it with grass, but I'm just going to put like a couple. I'm going to put a lot. Okay, put a couple over here. And just to balance it out, I'm going to put one over on the other side. If you just do everything on one side. It won't look balanced. And I'm just struggling trying to paint sideways here, so bear with me. And then you can go back over that um, with some of those greens when you're done kind of put the grass in front of the tree if you wanted to cover some of that up. My tree a little bit bigger. And like I said, I'll try to put some screenshots of these up for you. Um, or I'll just attach them to a, um, a separate file so you can see what they look like a little clearer. But I would love to see what you guys are doing. Um, send me some pictures when you finish your projects. And I hope to have some more projects out for you soon.
See you guys.